Okay. Good morning. Good morning. We're very happy today in the third of our Kinesis seminars to welcome Maria Oderit from the Fundación Botín to give a live session from the University of Navarra about Patrimonio para Jóvenes, that is cultural heritage for young people and how that can help to bring young people back into shrinking and depopulated areas and give them new life. So I'm going to hand over now to Maria Oderit. She will be speaking for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then after that, we have time for questions from the online chat and also from the room today. Okay, I would last, like to ask anybody who's present physically, please to turn off their microphones because it does cause an echo. Okay, so welcome. And here is Maria Oderit, who is going to talk to us about knowing to understand, enjoy and conserve. Patrimonio para jóvenes. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. Hello everyone who is here live and everyone who is listening to me uh, online. I would like, well, thank you for the presentation. As uh, Ruth said, I am here as a member of Patrimonio para jóvenes. Patrimonio para jóvenes is, a, well, I will explain later what Patrimonio para jóvenes is, but just to give you a little bit of an introduction. I've been a member of Patrimonio para Jóvenes from the last 10 years, so, so since well, a little bit less, so since 2013, actually. So I think that I am one of the people that can tell you a little bit more about the project and show you the results that we have been having for from the last 10 years. I know that you are here as researchers or people from the university and from my own university experience, I know that data is important for you. However, this presentation is going to be a little bit different in the sense that um, I am going to be giving you my experience. So if you do want or do you, or you do need data in terms of membership or activities or anything, uh, funding, for example, you can reach uh, to me or to, well, we have Pilar here, the president of the of Patrimonio para Jóvenes. I will leave my email at the end and you can do that. However, I am just going to be explaining a little bit Patrimonio para Jóvenes as a project and the spirit of Patrimonio para Jóvenes is living it and experiencing it. So it will be counterproductive to actually be here giving you data and just that. So starting with that, I am going to, yeah. What are we talking about today? So we're going to talk uh, about Patrimonio para Jóvenes, obviously. So I'll explain a little bit about the project itself and how it, how it works, the goals that they have. Then uh, the pandemic happened, so our whole model of working changed, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about what we, what we did then. Then uh, pre-pandemic, how it actually worked. And you will see that many of the things that we used to do, we have continued to do in a different manner or in a different way, but this is the thing. And then our conclusions, why we do what we do. So uh, I would like to share uh, with you this video that was done at the beginning of our journey as a society. So you will see that it's a video from, I think it's from 2014, if I'm not wrong. You will see a little me going around a teenage me in the video. And it's going to talk about the first goal of how the society of Patrimonio para Jóvenes was actually envisioned. So this changed a little bit over the years because as the years pass and we have more experience, the goal change. But you will see what the main goal was so I'm going to try to share the video and hope that there are no problems with the sound. En Italia, Canadá, en Japón y en Irlanda. En Bélgica, en Cuba, en Escocia, Inglaterra y en Estados Unidos, en, en Nueva York. En Segovia, en 
y en Ávila. <risa> pues he estado en Segovia. Y ya está, no hay ningún otro. Patrimonio para Jóvenes es un proyecto que nace con la idea de dar a conocer el arte y el patrimonio cultural español a la gente más joven, con una prioridad. Las zonas rurales y las zonas de interior, que son las menos conocidas, pero son de un gran interés, y la idea es revitalizarlas. Quería conseguir poner de moda todo el interior de España, que se generaran puestos de trabajo para restauradores, para guías, para historiadores del arte, y todo teniendo como un marco de fondo el preciosísimo patrimonio artístico y cultural que tenemos en estas zonas. Porque no se puede creer lo que no se conoce. We could listen to that well online. <laughs> and so, and I, I want to ask the room, have you been to any of those places? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Either the international list or the national one. <laughs> well, so, Patrimonio para Jóvenes is a cultural organization for young people. You could see that I committed to this presentation as I saw you images of me in my teenage years. <laughs> but uh, they, as you will see, people, the people that are in this video are not the ones that are actually the photos from the last two years because it changes. It is one of the, the, the things that are the main issues that, that, made, that has a, a, a society that is focused on young people, which is that People in their young years, in their university years, especially they move, they go to the places. So that's something that was changing. So people from the last 10 years are not the ones that you are going to be seeing in these pictures. But that's the goal, young people. And the goal was to, is to broadcast Spanish cultural heritage and art, which is the goal that you saw in this video. And the second goal, which is something that was there from the beginning, but has only recently become that much more important is a platform to promote youth employment. So uh, you saw in the video, we have Clara Prago there uh, taking pictures and, and playing the video that we then saw. So uh, she then found the jobs is currently in Madrid, but she had a portfolio of her works that were done in Patrimonio para Jóvenes. So that was there from the beginning. However, now since the pandemic, as things have to change, uh, Patrimonio para Jóvenes decided to focus also to be a platform to promote youth employment while doing the main goal of broadcasting Spanish cultural heritage and getting to know the regions that are unknown in, in Spain and in Navarra specifically. Oh. Oh, I don't know what happened. I'm going to exit and go out back in. Well, you can see it still, right? I, think. Uh, I can continue, I guess. Yeah. So uh, the pandemic happened in 2020. And what we had was in 2020, we had obviously restrictions. I'm not going to explain the COVID-19 pandemic because we're all tired of listening to that. But yes, the repercussions that it had on, on our uh, on Patrimonio para Jóvenes, which was in 2020, after the full lockdown, the restrictions remained there. The fear remained there. The rise of cases remained there, and uh, we had to do the activities in a different way. So it had to be outside, it had to be masked, and it had to be short vis visits with a few people, with a little amount of people. And then in 2021, and this year, 2022, even though restrictions are fewer, 
there are still members who are not comfortable with certain situations and we have to give that into account when we plan uh, our goals and when we plan the activities that we're going to undertake. Yeah. So how did we fix this? Or what methods did we try to change uh, the way we do things, keeping the same goal, which is to go to the places that need to be seen and visited so we can learn to love them and then we can learn to preserve them. So what we did is one, we went near. <laughs> we couldn't live, if you remember the people that live here, we couldn't live Navarra in some locations in some moments. So obviously we had to go near, but also because you couldn't really share cars or you couldn't really, people were uncomfortable. So we just went to places that were near Pamplona. I am going to invite everyone that is here in the room with me to try to identify these places. They are in a 20 minute drive at most from Pamplona. So if you can, that's amazing. If not, then you have homework from this, <laughs> which is yes, to go and visit them. So we went near, some pictures. We also tried to use outside spaces, especially in the summer, but as you know here, Sometimes the water does not allow that, but well, we just put on coats and when on walks, <laughs> obviously masks. Um, yeah, we went on a lot of walks around the different rural areas, which was something that also members were really wanting to do because after the pandemic, we really wanted to go outside and just get to know other places. And then what we also did was to use the people that we knew. So to use the people that in Patrimonio para Jóvenes that had an area of expertise, which has been one of the goals since the beginning. So as you saw, Clara Frago was taking pictures. You will see in the next, uh, in, at the beginning of, of, the, of Patrimonio para Jóvenes, but you will see that in the next slides, I'm going to talk about different people, young people like, like me, who are members of Patrimonio para Jóvenes and give their expertise in different ways. So for example, Lupia Ruiz is an architecture student. So see a uh, focus on a research project regarding architecture, and um, we'll see Tassi Rank, he's, he's a design gradu uh, graduate, so he focus on design and creativity. Um, we, we see here Modena, she's an, uh, she's an engineer, so she provides those services because we couldn't call someone else from another place to come and to tell us these things. And also because if you have it with you, then that's a place of creating conversation. So, some of these places were Ororbia, Ibero, Mendiorri, Atasco, Eat, Olza, Villava, Matersoin, Arellano, Vallepien, San Raúl. I don't know if you've been, maybe to Villava, and Mendiorri, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so these are some of the places that are nearby and that we visited during that time. So that was the first way that we changed a little bit. Then uh, we tried to celebrate and share because what we did and one way of also promoting and getting to know these places that people might not know that well is to celebrate them and for that we need to engage with the local population and um, what we did here is in 2020 in the european heritage days uh, we created an event with javier you all know javier because of the javieradas from those who, who are international listening in uh, javier is a village near pamplona and people go there once a year to do a pilgrimage. If you're religious or maybe just the hike to go there, it's a really big cultural event. In 2020 and 2021, it was canceled or with a lot of restrictions. So the, that village that lives from tourism, from the castle and in, especially in those days, found itself trying to survive and to promote itself as many did after the pandemic. So what we did was we talked to the mayor, who's here in this picture. We took, we did a, a town hall meeting with all the neighbors of the, of the village. They all came, all the, uh, also more elderly people, and they all came and, and talked to us and explained, well, this is the situation in our village. We want to do something to celebrate it. Let's see what we can do. And our members tried to, with their expertise, do whatever they could to do so. How uh, did we do this? First, we went, we visited, we talked to them, we got to know them, we learned to love them, and then we were able to share it. And we did activities such as guided visits, but also something that they could actually take with them and remain with them and use in future occasions. So what we have here are some skeletons. Have you been to Javier? Some, some of those from, yeah. Have you been inside the castle 
when you're leaving, there's like this tiny chapel with skeletons. Yes, okay, someone from here. So what, what we did is in this tiny chapel that is full of paintings of skeletons, it, it is usually gated to preserve it. And you cannot really go in and really see them. So what we decided to do was we took photos of them and then created a mock-up version that schools could use and students could use and they in the castle could use to show people how they actually work, the, the, the size. And so they could dance with the skeletons <laughs> because as it was a dance la muerte or a dance of death, not a, a, a quite well-preserved one actually. And many people do not know that that was a way of highlighting that. And also for them to keep what we have done, we just don't, it is not a tourist trip. We don't just want to go talk and leave and give a guided visit. Other types of activities we did uh, also in Javier, um, this one was done in April last year. Also uh, COVID, uh, with COVID measures. So outside with flu kites. <laughs> And we collaborated with other uh, groups and associations, in this case, uh, the Society of Chinese People here in Navarra. And um, it was also an amazing project. And yes, yeah, so you can compare. This is what it looked like before the pandemic. So we had in 2019 in Raul Alto, singing, dancing. <laughs> we also um, engage the same is the same spirit at the end. So it was to get to know a place, engage with it, engage with the local people there, try to um, celebrate it and share it, and share it in an event and share it afterwards, obviously, on our, our social media and all of the channels that I will tell you about later. This is 2018, and then our third way. So first we uh, went near, then we celebrated, and now we are getting to know and sharing, and I'm going to explain with our own expertise, as I said, and I'm going to explain what we're currently doing. So in the last two years, this is the prayers that have been done, have been done by members of our Patrimonio para Jóvenes. So here are our rappers. <laughs> we created a rap music video that I will try to show you if the internet allows it at the end. I hope you like it. It's not translated into English, but well, you, it's, it's music, so I hope you enjoy it. And uh, what they did is they went to many different villages here in, in Navarra, talk to the people there and try to create a rap that was focused and the message was focused on the population and how those people felt, people that live in rural villages, how they felt. And it is a rap that those that understand Spanish are going to see at the end of the message. <laughs> then, yeah, here we have other pictures of those same days. As you see, uh, they were the rappers who were in two different uh, places, but a lot of members went with them just to get to know the people and get to know the, the locations. Here we have Lucia. Lucia is an architecture student and she created a, a project, a research project focused on monasteries. So what she did was she focused on the use of the, of the monasteries and how it has changed and evolved. And obviously she went there also, talked to the monks living there or the people living there, and then presented those findings. And then we have Tasio. Tasio, he just finished this, uh, his design degree last year. Yeah, he's currently working in Madrid in a design studio. And his Bachelor of Thesis project is this project over here, which focuses on creativity and um, how creativity can be found in rural spaces and areas and how it's been lost. So how the population, his, his theory or his thesis is that the population is making us lose creativity. And what he did is this is a rooted chair, he calls it Silla Raid, so rooted chair, that he creates chairs with everyday objects. And he has this idea of, well, when, for example, thinking about his grandfather in his village, if he needed a chair, he would use a tire if he had a tire. Now you buy one in Ikea or you buy one, whatever. <laughs> so this type of making do with what you have is what he's saying that we're losing. So he did his thesis and then came, came uh, got to know us, came uh, in as a member and he said to, that he wanted to share his, uh, his thesis with other people and get to know other people in other uh, parts of, of Spain. 
So he, thanks to us, he was able to give talks about exploración creativa or uh, creativity depopulation in different spaces and also to give his TV in, in the mass media. So in TV and also interviews in the local diaries. And well, some other people, I'm not going to explain everything that we've done over the last two years, but also you've seen all these pictures. Uh, they have been done by different young people who either study design or study uh, communications or study or are photographers. So they're all in their 20s, 21, 22, 23. Some of them are, most of them are still students. And, and this is a way of creating also youth employment. And our researcher also that came to give us one of our talks. How did this look pre-pandemic? We still had research without masks, <laughs> but it was still, uh, but we had research. Um, <coughs> Here we are in the, in the in Pamplona's main archive, um, Town Hall archive. And then we have Marta here who had a project, also a uh, research project, focusing on archives and, uh, fam and, her and familiar heritage. So family heritage and how you can have like a, an organized family archive. <laughs> really an, uh, also an amazing experience that she did the research with us and then uh, shared it also in a presentation. And then we also did, uh, you can see also uh, younger me <laughs> there with Marta. We both did a research project on Juliana Bright, an architect. I don't know if you know him. Or if you want to ask me any questions about that project, we can do it at the end of the talk. Um, but um, we did some research, but research looks like that and also looks like let's use this research that one of our members is doing to create day trips, to create trips, to get to know people to see what we're what is happening regarding this specific area of research and also talking to the local people obviously and always with the aim to share it i'm not going to talk about research because you're researchers and you know a lot about this so i'm going to talk about our other areas of um of action which are visits i have some pictures here there are many there are hundreds of them you can visit our social media, Patrimonio para Jóvenes, in Instagram or in uh, Twitter also. But you can also see our webpage where we have blog posts with all the visits that we did before the pandemic and after the pandemic. But the main idea was always the same. Go somewhere, learn about it, learn to love it, learn that it exists sometimes, and then learn to preserve it, obviously. And to do that, we have day trip visits which were some but many of them were to have were made were made to be a special experiences so experiences that were where you could connect with the person that was explaining it to you or that you could visit a place from a completely different way or perspective in a way that would make you connect with the place and engage with the place in a in a different way as if you were just a tourist going to a place so here we have a restoration project that we went to visit. Then uh, this is Pastrana. <laughs> you can see here that um, this is not just us playing dress up. <laughs> this is uh, in Pastrana. There's an association of neighbors of the, of, the city that is, of the village actually that decided that in order to create more tourism and in order to um, create uh, calling for more people to come, they will dress up as the people from the area of the castle that Palacio Ducal de Castrana, Pastrana, that, that is in that city, in that village, sorry. And they will do theater licenses. They invited us to go there and see how they were doing uh, those visits and also to dress with them and see how uh, it was happening. Also an amazing, uh, an amazing time. And they are doing this in the most historically uh, accurate way possible. So they have seamstress and uh, they also do their historical research to try to approach it in the most historical accurate way possible. But the main goal is obviously to call people to go to their place that they were feeling was being underutilized. So these are the photos from the strip. Obviously, if we go there, we're not just going to go there and then go for a beer <laughs> we are going to actually go and get to know the place 
and then share it, which we did in our social media channels and web page. It's another experience that we have, which were uh, a few days focusing on art classes and art projects in Irurita. You may not know, if you may. Also, really beautiful place near Pamplona. If you get the chance to do it, I really encourage you to do so. Which was another way of discovering this place that you might not have known beforehand. And then in El Camino de Santiago, so the way of San James that some of you may, may, may know, well, most of you will know, but some of you may know uh, online, uh, which was another way of discovering some, sp some spaces within the way, not the way as it itself as it is quite well known, but some specific places that may not be as well known and promote them. And this one is also a really nice activity that we did, which was <laughs> focusing on paintings and painting our eyes. So we make up based on those paintings. So it was also a different type of activity that we proposed to our members. I am going to try this video. Let's see if it works. And this is the last one of these type of activities I want to share. <laughs> So let's talk about communicating, which is something I've been referencing during this whole uh, conference, and I want to talk more in depth about. First of all, the one that works the best, word of mouth, inviting friends. So some of the people that you've seen in these pictures, I consider themselves my friends because I became friends with them during these visits. Some of them were my friends and I just said, hey, I'm doing this amazing event uh, with Padre Mario Parajones, we're painting our eyes, let's go. Or we are going to see how they manually play bells in Arellano. So let's go and, and see that. That's the way that, that you can actually encourage our friends to go and, and visit. And everyone is invited, by the way, if you want to come to the next visit the next Saturday, you can come. <laughs> I'll send you a little bit after the if you're obviously here. Then uh, second, our social media. In this, in our world today, you cannot do anything without social media. If you want to share something, um, you can follow us, all of you, online and, and here. <laughs> this, if this looks a little bit promotional, sorry. Um, our Instagram and Twitter, and then, as you saw, events that are then broadcasted in the mainstream media, and interviews that are then also broadcasted in the mainstream media which is also uh, something that we really, if, if it happens, we really appreciate. And then some, some ways that the Monibar Hovenes uses its resources is oh. to produce pieces of media that can be later shared, like the rock video that we're going to see in a few minutes, like a documentary that we're currently working oh. on and I will now explain, oh. and then some other events like my el Viaje or the trip of Maestu and Arquitectura, Arquitectura Soñadas or dream architectures. So I'm going to explain this. So El Viaje de Maestu or Maestu El Viaje was a spot that we did in which now you're going to think that we are the weird people that dress up in different clothing. <laughs> These were the only two occasions that we did that, but both of them are significant enough for me to put in this power. So in, um, we took a painting from Maestu 
and we went to the original place where this painting was painted and dressed one of our members in the clothing that the person from the painting was doing, was, was working, <laughs> took photographs, did a, uh, took a, uh, did a video, which is in Spanish, so I'm not sharing it today, uh, and then promoted it, social media, mainstream media, and, and it worked really well, which was a way of promoting that specific place, which was um, also the painter. Then Arquitecturas Soñadas. This is Pamplona. So places in Pamplona, some of them might seem familiar to people who live here. Some of them may not, <laughs> which was the whole aim of the project, finding places here in Pamplona that may not be as well known, but are extremely beautiful, photograph them in great quality. And we did a, an exhibit uh, an exhibit here in Pamplona. And then this is the documentary that we're currently doing, <laughs> we're currently working on. Abakis, uh, which is, um, I have here yeah, a photo of the team of the documentary currently. <laughs> As you see, they have tweets, so they took a photo. <laughs> it's not an official photo, but it works the same. And um, what they are currently doing, I don't have the, finest, uh, the final product yet because they're currently producing it. They're currently doing is they're going to places uh, in, in Castilla and they are recording and filming what they are seeing in villages that feel as if they've been abandoned. And they're creating also a comparison and a metaphor between these places, these rural villages that feel as if they are, they describe themselves as if being even thematic parks. So that people come in the summer, stay for a few days or in the holidays, and then they leave and they feel as if they are like there to entertain them their words, uh, not mine. And uh, they are talking to these people, filming their experiences, they're creating the documentary and creating a comparison with a um, village that was, that is currently underwater due to a dam that was built, that was obviously forgotten and abandoned. So it's this comparison. That's why we had the beautiful picture uh, that we saw two slides ago. Then, because I I've been talking for 30 minutes and I don't want to go over time and I want to leave you time to, to, to ask questions. I'm going to play the rap video for you, <laughs> which is something I hope you've been wanting to see. I see notes here in the, in the room. Um, and then I'll conclude the presentation and open the floor for questions. So. <laughs> Voy a morir matando y viviré aguantando 
defendiendo mi tierra hasta el último aliento Soy un soldado raso con carisma de alto cargo Los silbidos de los pájaros ya me van guiando Un viento huracanado hace que me vaya yendo Pero solo al viento el cañón yo sigo peleando Me siento cansado, pero esperanzado De que algún día todo volverá a surgir Ese amor, esa pasión, esas ganas de vivir Porque moriré en el mismo lugar en el que nací ¿A que sí? Pues claro, siento ese vacío Que ya nunca he llenado, aún me siento frío Y por dentro estoy quemado el eco más de los coros de lo que antes se rapeaba. Contra marea, contra donde sea. Donde peleamos, defendemos nuestra idea. Contra marea y viento, defiendo lo que siento. Todo por la bala, estos puros sentimientos. Contra viento y marea, cuando y donde sea. Siempre peleamos, defendemos nuestra idea. Contra marea y viento, defiendo lo que siento. Todo por la bala, estos puros sentimientos. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> and if you weren't able to see it due to internet reasons, I can share the link of all the videos that I've used in this presentation to you. Does it work? Yeah. Okay, so our, I hope that I was able to show all of uh, our goals and our activities in this almost 35 minute presentation. Uh, but to conclude, we aim to create connection. So you cannot protect what you do not know and you cannot love also what you do not know. And to protect, sometimes it is better if you love it. And especially it is better if you know it. So many of the places shown are near Pamplona. Uh, I did here a little survey and you didn't know many of them, which is completely fine. But members, we have now visited them, but we haven't uh, visited them before either. So it is completely, we, we believe it is a completely, um, it's completely necessary to create this set of activities to get to know what we have. Then I hope that I make clear these are not tourist trips, although tourism can be a way to bring life back and to promote different places and spaces uh, that are becoming abandoned. The goal is to educate our members and also educate the, the society as a whole and, this, and sharing these places with them. And then to give back, either by offering members expertise while also promoting their employment <laughs> and also by sharing it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I am open to questions. Pilar, uh, the president of Patrimonio para Jóvenes is also here in the crowd and she can also answer questions. <laughs> but we're both here and I'm going to give you my email address. Um, Patrimonio para Jóvenes email address in case you need anything at all or if you need any data. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you and thanks everyone who is watching from home. Thank you so much, uh, Maria. And sorry, just maybe we'll carry on sharing the screen for a minute, just so that you've all got the address. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to stop sharing and maybe Maria would like to answer some questions. So, um, okay, so who, who would like to ask a question? Sabrina. For example, how cost intensive it is actually to go to these places or how you manage it, for example, by driving or taking a bus or... Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the question, just, just for people who are watching, the question is how cost intensive this is or how is it financed? Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you manage to get these young people out to these places <laughs> and do these exciting things? Uh, because maybe this is invisible in what you were explaining. So we don't quite know how that works. So maybe, Maria, you can explain something about it. Yes, of course. Well, thank you. So it has to be easy in terms of we cannot actually ask people to travel many hours to get to a place. So as this has been easier in terms of paradoxically we, with the pandemic because we went to places that were really nearby. So you could actually get there with a bus or with in Mendeyori, you can take a bus, for example, for, uh, uh, an urban bus. But uh, what we try to do is share cars, 
sure and also the cost of gasoline, <laughs> especially now with the, with the gas being so high. Mm -hmm. But we try to share cars and, and we try to do, if not with trains or something that is cheap and not really cost intensive, as you said. So not really, that's something that is not going to cost a lot of money to our members. Sometimes uh, if we are doing an activity, for example, in terms of research or someone is going in somewhere, the, the society will pay them back with the for, for the for the tickets, obviously. And in other terms of funding, I, I know we have all the data of where we get all of the funding in our memoirs that we can share with you online if you need it. I think there are two questions here. I was going to ask you about artistic uh, creativity. If you, I realize, I realize that you evolve by designers and artists. Mm -hmm. You have maybe, or maybe you are, you are planning to organize some sort of artistic uh, booth so mm -hmm. that you could invite artists from various parts of Spain mm -hmm. who could, uh, because I know that this is done in other countries, mm -hmm. who could probably work on particular parts of uh, Navarra mm -hmm. and then uh, produce. Yes, in terms of artists, it is true that I have not shown uh, some activities where we uh, where we did some murals, so like artistic murals in different places. In, in, in Burgos. Yeah, we did that in, in Burgos. So they were artists that painted their vision. But it is true that it it's a project that could be open. We have, as you said, it is more like digital producers or designers and also photographers, videographers in terms of sharing. And uh, well, you saw the also the uh, the workshop that we had for paint for painters. Mm -hmm. But it is true that it's not a line of work that we have really focused on. We have more focus like on the general uh, population, but it is something that could be really interesting for sure. If there are no more questions, I'll ask the second one. If you cannot have uh, has left, has been left from uh, oral traditions in Madrid, as I know, a similar project that is mm -hmm. uh, being done in Castilla and Leon. When people travel, but still talk to the old generation mm -hmm. and learn from, from them what they know about the tradition of the Catalan. Mm -hmm. so we do and we don't. In in we do talk to people mm -hmm. uh, there, obviously, to try to engage and get to know the place. But if you are talking about then um, collecting all of these stories mm -hmm. to then put it into a project, for example, mm -hmm. a video, not really. In terms of oral traditions, we have not done that. We have done it in well, in documentary. They're currently focusing on that in, in a way, but we do. One of the main parts of the activity, uh, these activities are to engage with the local population, talking to them, obviously, and many of those are oral tradition, obviously, but we do not then post it somewhere. If that's the For example, question. particular stories, legends uh, mm -hmm. related to particular places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we we have not done mm -hmm. that in specifically. <laughs> not really, but it is, it would be, an, I it is an really to, to connect generations. Yeah. It, 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 Pilar. <laughs> yeah, so the, the origin of this is to connect the young people with the heritage rather than to collect historical documents or restore monuments, but they could easily collaborate with people who are doing that. Yeah, I see no incompatibility. Yeah. It would be a really interesting proposal. I really like that. So oh, I just <laughs> take note. Um, yeah. Um, Oliver had a question. Yeah, I have actually. Right. Uh, so you said that uh, you're trying to like help promote villages, right? And uh, my question is, uh, if these villages are only counting when you like put conditions like you to promote them, or are they actually doing something themselves? It depends. Some of them, for example, well, Pastrana, you said that they were doing this whole. Uh, reenactment almost event where they do theatralized visit. Some of them are doing others, other things with maybe more official, uh, official, sorry, official agencies. In, I know other groups 
well, I, I work at Fundación Botín and I know they have their own program in Cantabria, so I know that they exist, but some of them uh, are not because maybe they are, they don't know how or they do not want to do that in that aspect or something. It is a really complicated case by case scenario, but I wish that a lot of people were doing that. And I hope that you as you're doing your research can actually <laughs> do something about that. <laughs> yes. Oliver, I think you had another question. Yeah, so um, my question is about basically about coming to Santiago. And I would like to ask like, if there's any difference in the way you promote villages when coming to Santiago and villages outside of Santiago. Okay, so the difference is whether the, the villages on the main pilgrim route are promoted in one way and the villages that are not on that route are promoted in another way. This is quite a, a delicate question locally. Um, you have to imagine that here, the Camino de Santiago, the route to Santiago de Compostela is an extremely successful pilgrimage route, which thousands of people go on every year. And so it makes a big difference to the villages it goes through. Maria, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, we usually, we have focused, which is something that I wanted to show, and that's why I showed it in our presentation, that we have done that. It's not that we ignore the villages that are along the way, but it is true that we usually focus on other villages because they are not as well known. Because if you are doing the pilgrimage, you go through these places and you visit them, even though sometimes you visit them, you don't focus on all that they have to offer. So that's why we did with Carreneros Condes and a specific trip there and post and sharing and then a, a blog post also we wrote and a, one of the people that went there also did some sketching that the student later posted. So in that case, artistic kind of that we were talking about before. But it, we, it is a difference in the sense that we usually focus on those that are not in the Camino because we understand that they have their own promotional route. However, it is not something it, that does not mean that we ignore them or because it is an important part of Spanish cultural heritage, obviously. Are you also working with Spanish or Spanish or Asian? Yes and no. So yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> In the sense that, for example, what you saw, uh, what we did with the skeletons that was later gifted to Javier, those have been used mainly in schools. So in, indirectly, we, in, indirectly, we work with them. Um, we have also done some activities that were more focused to children. However, they are few and in between because we try to focus in late teenagers, so teenagers in their late teens and young people in their early 20s, mid 20s. Although if you're 30, then you're also more than welcome. <laughs> but that's what, who we tend to focus on. And it's a, it's a manner of like, it's just because of scope and who we can reach. Sometimes we, if it has been something that we could do at the same time, we have done it, but not really. And there are some projects that focus on uh, creating school visits uh, for like, I'm, I feel like once you say something. We don't want people just to go spend months or spend schools yeah yes for those that didn't hear that we don't want people to go because they must so for example if you are a 14 year a 14 year old in a class and your school goes somewhere you have to go because you're you must go is mandatory however if you're a 14 year old that wants to come with us you can come if you want if you don't want to come you don't have to come yes one last question from oliver i think so uh, after you did, for example, some promotion stuff for, for any part of the village, did you get like feedback from the village? Like did you get more people coming or something like that? Yeah, so the question is about feedback from the villages, whether, you know, after these activities, more people came or what impact did it have on the villages? If you're talking about raw data, so if we have numbers, we don't, we don't have yeah. numbers, but in terms of people then contacting us and saying, well, this, been, this has been nice, it did happen in, in Javier. Yeah. In, and in other, in Rullera, in Rauralto. So where we've done like bigger events, it has really worked out. And, and sometimes just the media attention that they get from those events, we hope it does something, even if it's not complete, like related or interrelated. So if you don't really know, yes, we came here because Patrimonio Para Hobbies did an event, but yeah, we saw it on the newspaper two weeks ago. We don't know what it was about, but 
We decided it was a nice picture and we went. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Maria. That was a fascinating talk. And I'm sure it inspired us all for our own projects, which are going to be taking place over the summer and next year to bring young people back into shrinking villages. Um, I would like to say also that our next seminar is in two weeks time on the 11th of May at 12 o'clock again. And it's going to be about demographic change, uh, one of many transitions. And the speakers will be Professor Elis Bulder and Professor Elie van der Klau from Hansen Hochschule Groningen. So we're looking forward to that. Again, that would be a slightly more theoretical take, but we're trying to combine theory and practice in these seminars. So thank you very much. And it's been a pleasure being with you all. <laughs>